even today, and bring the number of them to me that I may know. And Joab answered, The Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as they be. Did anybody get that? We're greater because of God. Amen. But my Lord the King, are they not all my Lord's servants? Why then do my Lord require this thing? With, why will thou, why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? And I want to talk to you this morning uh, from the subject and our theme for 2021, greater works because of God. I, I want you to get that in your mind that God wants us to do greater works in 2021. Because if we draw closer to Him, we will do great works. Amen. Father, we bless and we thank you even now for your goodness and your mercy. And we pray that as your word goes forth, that it goes forth with clarity and with understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Greater works because of God. Now, as we examine our text, uh, we, we, we have to note that and ask the question, why did David want to number the people? In the very first verse, the Bible says that Satan stood up against Israel. And the thing that I, I want you to get from the very outset is that sometimes when God begins to bless, Satan will slip in and make us proud and boastful. David had no reason to number the people. God said on one occasion to David that if this wasn't enough, all you had to do was ask for more. He said, whatever you would have asked of me, he said, I would have gave it to you. That's a powerful statement from the God of the universe. Well, David got caught up in his pride. And when God started to bless, and when God starts to bless you, Satan will come and try to fill your head with pride, and pride will bring you down every time. Lift up your neighbor and say, every time. And, and so while you thinking you all of that, I, 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 I come out and warn you this morning to stay humble before the Almighty God. All the things that God has allowed this ministry uh, to do in 2021 or uh, 2020, it all glory belongs to Him. Amen. And God has done some amazing things. Uh, the, the fact that uh, the uh, law was approved and uh, you know, they, they, they started in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, the daycare never shut down. Uh, the counseling never shut down. Uh, the testing never shut down. And the church never shut down. Now, the building was shut down, but how I many know you can't shut down church because we are the church? Amen. And so even in the midst of all of that, God's people have triumphed. He, 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 man, and God has made a way and God has made provisions. You, 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 you see now, God used David's sin to punish Israel. And, and God gave uh, the opportunity to David to number in order to manifest the evil that was in David's heart outwardly. Because how many know that 
we can look the part. But God will expose you for who you really are. It's not that God doesn't already know, but you need to know where your heart is. Because the Bible says that God looks at the inward man. But it's man that looks at the outward. And so God allowed this so David could see that there was something in his heart that wasn't right. Even after God has said, David is a man after my own heart, God can't use you if you're full of pride. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. So God punished Israel and humbled David. Now, now this may suggest to, to, to us the difference in the Bible between a trial and a temptation. And so we've got to be able to recognize the difference. A trial uh, is something that in the end you're going to grow and be stronger. You're going to be better. Your anointing is going to be sharper. You're going to be able to help somebody else. But, But temptation is the test of your faith. Do you really believe God or you're holding on to God? And so Satan slipped up in the picture and David yielded to it because his heart outwardly was not right. He got caught up all in the numbers. Now, oftentimes the people that we think are friends are not our friends. And, and 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 let me tell you, I I, I don't care how, how long you've been running with whoever it is, they're not your friend if they're not in God. Amen. Amen. Now you can look at me crazy, but I'm I've been up there too long to be intimidated. I'm a freedom preacher. A deliverance preacher. And and I know the only way that you're going to be delivered is that you've got to know the truth. Amen. And and, and, and so a real friend, look at the name and say, a real friend, uh huh, is somebody that goes a little further. You 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 know, they're not trying to bring you down, they're trying to bring you up. And a, a, a real friend will tell you the truth when nobody else will tell you the truth. A, a real friend can see you bleeding uh, and, and they'll say you need a band-aid. Uh, amen. But your so-called friends can see you bleeding, uh, but as long as you are supplying what they need, they won't say nothing. Uh, look up your name and say, Jesus is the only real friend. Because the Bible said that the devil comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come uh, that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Uh, I I, want to tell you that if you really want to see the greater works in your life in 2021, I've got to go back to last week's text when we talked about absolute surrender. surrender. It's not until we totally surrender all of ourselves to God that God can really make us great. Now, anybody got a pen, a writing pen? We got one, two, three, four. Come on, pull them out. Pull them out. Pull them out. Pull them out. All right. Pull them out. Pull them out. He, 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 man, well, I, I, I ask that because I, I, I want you to keep it out and, and, and I want you to use this uh, as an illustration that, that the pen is absolutely surrenders to the work of the writer. Now, and that pen must be absolutely surrendered to the hand if the story is going to be wrote properly. Now, the pen doesn't say to the writer that, I I, I don't think you should write that, but the pen just learns how to totally surrender. 
And, and can I tell you that absolute surrender means that God is writing your story and you're not writing it. Amen. B -b because when you try to write the story, what you're saying is that God, I got this. Oh, can I tell you that God can do his work and amen, every day and every hour in your life. Amen. But God cannot do what he needs to do in your life uh, if you keep trying to take over amen, the pen. Amen. It's only when you, you, you know, when, when, when you're writing the letter, does the pen tell you not to write that? Well, 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 it sounds funny, but I'm talking about absolute surrender to God. It, it, because oftentimes we try to dialogue with God uh, other than saying, yes, thy servant here. Speak, Lord, thy servant here. Because God's going to ask you to do some things that you may not feel comfortable, but when you absolutely surrender to him. God will write your story and it will come out the way that God intended for it to be. Now, can I tell you that the cause of the weakness of many Christians is that we want to partially amen, work out our problems and then let God help us. I'm going to tell you, we've got it all wrong. We, we, we need to be like the song that says, I surrender all to thee, my blessed Savior. Because either God is leading or you lead. And now before you came to God, you were leading. And you know that ended up in a what? A mess. <laughs> and so... Uh, you, you, you must come to the utter helplessness to let God work. And, and then God will get the glory. Now, in the serenity prayer, it, 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 it talks about uh, God help me to accept the things that I cannot change. And the wisdom to know the difference. Well, we've got to know that Without God leading us, that we are powerless, we are helpless, and every choice and decision we make is going to end up on the wrong path. See, so so when we yield to God and God alone, then God will begin to uh, maneuver and take us down the road that we uh, ought to be going down. It was one writer that said that I can do nothing. God must and will do all. Now, don't let the enemy get you caught up in doubt. Uh, trust God to see you through every situation. Now, Joab was David's right-hand man, and he knew that God was... Uh, greater than anything because he was a man of war. And, and, and no doubt there was a lot of wars that he thought we should have lost. But he said to David that God makes his people a hundred times more than what they are. But I want somebody to get back today that quit looking for the crap. Uh, amen. Because God makes those that are here a uh, hundred times greater than what we actually are. Uh, that's why, amen, the text says greater because of God. Uh, greater works uh, because uh, if we absolutely surrender to God, uh, uh, God will make us greater. Uh, he, he said, Jesus said, greater works than these uh, will you do. And, and so when we begin to understand that God, uh, he, 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 man, is greater than any situation, greater than any circumstances, uh, greater than any rejection, uh, he, man, greater than any disappointment, uh, God is greater. Uh, and, and yet we are, or some of us, uh, we want to give God a little help. But look at your name and tell him he don't need your help. 
What God needs is for you to be absolutely obedient. Uh, somebody help me, Lord Jesus. We, we're always trying to help God out, but, but God doesn't need our help. He said, I want you to totally lean and depend on me. Look up your name and say, God's got you covered. See, instead of us coming to an understanding of what God wants us to say, we, we always are saying to ourselves that, uh, you, you, you know, I'm going to take hard things to God. I'm going to take everything to God in prayer and in supplication. Uh, because the Bible says that a good man's steps are ordered by the Lord. And so as Joab was speaking to David, now David was the king, uh, but Joab said, now why would you bring this transgression amen, against the people of God? Well, you know, some, sometimes our pride gets us in trouble. And, 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 and Job no doubt knew that God was not pleased, but he still honored the leadership and he numbered the people. He, he brought back uh, to David the number and, and David was all proud because of the number, but it wasn't the number that was important. It was his obedience to the word of God. And, 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 and so don't let the enemy get you caught up in doubt and in trusting God. Uh, you, you, you know, God has a way of multiplying instead of adding. Now, sin keeps people from hearing the voice of God, but repentance restores communication with God. Now, Abraham understood God's numbers because God said to Abraham in Genesis 18, he said that I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because it was such a wicked city. I, I want you to see the power of these numbers. And, 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 and Abraham said, Lord, if, if, if the fitting righteous will you spare uh, the city. Right. And God says, yes, if, if there's 50, I'll spare the city. But you say, but the city is wicked, it's evil. Amen. But remember, Joe, uh, Joab says that God's people, amen, are more than hundreds because God has a way of multiplying them. Uh, not adding two plus two, uh, but God multiplies. Uh, if, and, and Abraham went on to dialogue with God, uh, and, and, and he got down to 10. He said, well, Lord, if, if, if there's 10, uh, will you spare the city? And, and God says, if there's 10, uh, because David or Abraham understood uh, the power of the numbers. Uh, see, then, then Abraham, uh, he, he man, finally had to conclude that there was not even 10 uh, that was righteous in the city. Wow. Amen. But, but, but he understood. See, Jacob, uh, in, in Genesis also, he understood God's numbering, that God doesn't add, but God multiplies. Uh, in, in, in Genesis 32, amen, the Bible says that it was the speckled uh, and the spotted calves uh, that were more stronger and they kept multiplying. Uh, amen, and his father-in-law couldn't figure it out. Uh, he said, you started out with fewer, uh, but, but you end up with more. Uh, look at your name and say, God don't add. Uh, God multiplies. Uh, oh, somebody need to get that. Uh, I don't care about that little bit that you got. Uh, if you put God first. Uh, God will that. It's, uh, God will multiply. It. Uh, amen. Amen. But, but now let me move on here uh, because I have to tell you that Jesus, amen, was out, amen, ministering and the people were following him uh, and his disciples said to them in Matthew chapter 14 uh, beginning with verse 13 they said, uh, Jesus said, now these people have been with us all day long. Uh, sit them down uh, and feed them. Uh, uh, and they said, we don't have that kind of food. Uh, send them away. Uh, amen. Uh, but, but see, Jesus understands numbers. Uh, uh, amen. That 
God's numbers uh, are not like our numbers. Uh, oh, I want somebody to get that because somebody in your mind has been struggling. Uh, you've looked at your bills. Uh, you've got yourself in a fix. Uh, but, but it's not until uh, you put God first. Uh, but it's not until uh, you learn how to trust God with the numbers. So the Bible says that they here they are. They said now, uh, Jesus, we, uh, we we didn't even have enough to feed all these folks. The Bible says that he was a sit down. Mm -hmm. There was one lad there with five loaves and two fish. See, God always has a plan to bring you out of your situation. Uh oh, come on, look up to me. To tell him God's always got a plan. But you know what God is saying? Learn how to trust me. Learn how to put me first. Uh, he said, because, uh, you know, if you absolutely surrender yourself to me, he says, you're going to do greater works in 2021. Now, now I, I'm not telling you to believe me, God. I'm telling you to believe the word of God. Uh, when you absolutely surrender all of yourself to God, God, uh, when you absolutely surrender all of yourself to God, uh, that's a book not going to like you. Uh, amen. That's all right. Uh, but because as long as me, Jesus, got it going on, oh, it's all right. Uh, and so the Bible says, uh, amen, that, amen, that, amen, that God was trying to teach them, uh, amen, the power of numbers with God. Uh, amen. And so here, here they go. They said, all we got is two fish and five loaves. So, but, well, Jesus said, sit them down. Uh, amen. And, and that didn't include the women and the children. Uh, amen. But here we go. Uh, he broke the bread and he blessed it. Uh, amen. And then when he began to pack it out, uh, the Bible says uh, that everybody was fed. And, uh, and they had 12 baskets uh, left over. Uh, amen. What is God trying to tell you today? Uh, amen. That if you put birds, uh, you're going to have some levels. Uh, amen. In your cup. Uh, amen. Twelve baskets. Uh, amen. That started out uh, amen, with amen, two fish and five loaves. Uh, I don't know how you do that kind of math. Uh, amen. Uh, it's not natural math. Uh, it's supernatural. But and so God said, if you can learn how to trust me, uh, amen, I'll turn your situation around. Uh, all the any witnesses uh, that, that know, amen, that you should have lost this. Uh, you should have lost that. But look up your name and say, but God. Amen. And so here it is. Jesus feeds the 5,000. Uh, amen. And uh, can, can, can I go back to Gideon? Uh, he had 300,000 men. Uh, amen. And God said you are uh, 30,000 men. And God said you got too many. said, Lord, have you seen all of these enemies? But remember, God makes his people a hundred times greater than what they actually are. And he, 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 he said, you got too many. Some of them were scared. Uh -huh. Some of them didn't want to come anyhow. Uh -huh. he, he said, everybody, he, he, man, that don't laugh like a dog, he said, sit them back home. Uh -huh. you, you don't become when you and more. You, you know, you, 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 you got to keep an eye uh, amen, open for the enemy while you're nourishing yourself. Remember, all, all those that had their whole head down in the water, if the enemy would have came up, boom, bail them in the side. And so God uh, was protecting them, uh, even when they didn't know he was protecting them. Uh, and so here it is. Uh, God gave them a pen. Uh, he said, all you need uh, is 300 men. Uh, because I don't want nobody uh, to try to get the glory. Uh, well, I got to move on here. Uh, but I need to tell you, though, that in 2021, uh, what we will need is perseverance. Uh, when it looks like it's not going to happen, uh, you got to keep on uh, pushing anyhow. Uh, what we need in 2021 is patience. Uh, 
What do you mean, Pastor? But, well, nothing uh, is built overnight. Uh, but, amen. But if you stay with God, uh, God will stay with you. Uh, if I tell you, uh, you got to have prayer. Uh, amen. The perseverance, uh, patient prayer uh, is what got you uh, to where you are now. Uh, and it's going to take you uh, to where you got to go in God. Uh, well, it's like the psalmist. Uh, we may acknowledge and praise God for his greatness. Uh, amen. The psalmist says in, in Psalm 48 and 1, he said, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise in the city of our God, uh, his holy mountain. Uh, and then in Psalm 104 and 1, he says, Praise the Lord my soul, uh, Lord my God, uh, you are very great, you are, you are uh, uh, clothed with splendor and majesty. Amen. But we uh, acknowledge that he is greater, greater than all else. Uh, when we do, we, we, we can say like the psalmist, uh, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. Uh, you alone, God, are God. Uh, see, God is greater than all the forces of, uh, forces of, 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 of uh, nature and the supernatural. In, in 1 John chapter uh, 4 and verse 4, he says, You dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. Look at your neighbor and say, you got God, you're greater than any enemy. See, because you're not fighting this battle by yourself, but you got amen, the God of the universe living in you uh, if you have the Holy Ghost. Uh, man, in Colossians chapter 2 and verse 15, it says, Having disarmed the power and authorities have made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. And so God will put every enemy to shame in your life. But the devil thought he had you, but God said, not so. Amen. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish the strongholds. According to 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, and then in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 and 11, says, finally, be strong in the Lord in his might and power. Put on the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. Now you can't stand against the wiles of the enemy until you put on the whole armor of God. Uh, well, can I tell you that God is greater than all other gods or anything set in place of him. But because our world is mixed up today, uh, we're worshiping everything uh, but the one who created us. Uh, but can I tell you that God is greater than any and everything. Uh, God is greater than all the nations of the world. Uh, God blesses you when uh, you surrender to him. Uh, now, when, when, when Ahab, uh, a, a man, uh, realized that the king had these 32 other kings, uh, he, he says, I totally surrender. I'll tell you, don't be moved by the numbers. Be moved by the God that lives in you. Because when when you're moved by the God that lives in you, then God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ask or think. And so God will bless you when you surrender. The hardest thing for us to do is totally Surrender. The king told King Ahab, I want your gold. I want your silver. I want your wives. I want everything that you're fond of. Well, that's what the enemy comes to do. He wants to rob you of your greatest gift 
And the greatest gift you have is a right relationship with God. And, and God says that if you will totally surrender to me, he, he says then there's no weapon formed against you that shall be able to prosper. He, he says it, it, it doesn't matter how the devil comes. If you totally surrender to me, then I'm fighting the battle. Now, I'm going to put your car on cruise control and, and then keep hitting the brake and taking it off. Uh-oh. Yeah. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Uh-huh. Well, you, you, you know, God says, I want you to put it on cruise control. Be, 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 because when you put it on cruise control with me, I know when to slow it down. I know when to speed it up. I know when to tell you to take a legal U-turn. Uh, because you're trusting in me. He, 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 man, but, but, but see, anything man-made, uh, you've got to always keep making adjustments. Uh, but when you give it to God, there are no defects. The son right there does no failure in God. Uh, amen. And, 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 and so David, when David realized that he had messed up, David was too proud to repent and humble himself. David said, Lord, it's not the people's fault. I did this. But can I tell you, your choices and your decisions affect more than just you. Amen. Many times people say, it's my body. I do what I want to with it. But your choices and your decisions affect more than you. That day, people died. They didn't die because they were guilty. They died because their, because their king was caught up in his pride. And God says that I can't let this go. And God gave him three choices. He says, you choose which one. They looked at him and said, Lord, they're all bad. <laughs> he, he, he said, Lord, you choose because I know that you are a God of wisdom. And God chose and God calls uh, the death angel to come through. They see people just dropping right and left. But David had enough sense to go and pray. He, 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 he says, I, I got to make a sacrifice so that, this can, so that this death angel can stop. Now, this is later on in the text, but David went and he seen the threshing floor. And, and, and he made a sacrifice. And when the death angel seen it, God says, that's enough. Well, they never had another problem trying to count the people. Be be because sometimes we can get around others that don't display the right spirit. That's why the Bible tells us to come out from among them yeah. and be ye separate, saith the Lord, because you know what? Their behavior doesn't line up with the word of God. Mm -hmm. Now, now and, and sometimes folks say, well, I'm strong, you know, I can have it. No, you can't. It, it's just a matter of time before it wears off on you. And the things that God delivered you from, you'll find yourself picking it back up again. And, and, but God says that if you totally surrender, he, he, he says you're going to be greater because God is in control of your life. Now, when God closed or delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, they were plagued for plague. But then God used the death angel. And it was one that the enemy couldn't compete with. And that day the people of God walked out. 
They went in empty handed, but they came out with a whole bunch of spoils. And so what I want to say to you as I prepare to close is that you may have come in with nothing. But if you will totally surrender to God, I can promise you that God will turn your life around. God will begin uh, to add value. And material blessings as long as you don't get the big deal. As, as, as the blues sang or the R&B sang and said, Mr. Big Stuff, who do you think you are? Uh -huh. If you stay humble before God, the Bible says there's no good thing that he will withhold from you. And so I encourage you in 2021 to expect greater things. God is not moved by the pandemic. God will bless you in the midst of the pandemic. When, when, when there was a drought in the land, God sent the man of God to another broke woman that was a widow. They had one son and one meal out. Look at your name and say, not in the numbers. Oh, I, I want somebody to get this today because you've been rationalizing in your mind that I, I, I can't afford to pay my tithes. Let me tell you, you can't afford not to. Amen. When you understand the power of obedience and you give God what rightfully belongs to him, what you're saying is, God, not only do I trust you, but God, I worship, I worship you. I'm putting all of my trust in you. Lord, I'm, I'm the pen and when you tell me to move, I'm going to move. Look at your name and say, take the eraser off. You know, because some folks are always trying to erase what God is trying to do because it's not in your time. Somebody say, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. But you got to be like that pen. Whether you're left-handed or right-handed, when it flows, Whatever is coming to your mind. You see, sometimes we're so carnal minded and we fail as Christians because we're walking in the flesh and not in the spirit. You're doing good things, but is it your flesh or is it God? Because the Bible says that when God blesses, he has no sorrow. Don't seek to please people. Seek to please God. David got caught up because he's looking at all these other kings around him. And he knew there was a lot of people, but he wanted the number. Yeah, Doc, I'm, I, I, I'm running 600. Yeah, Doc, I'm running 1,000. It's not in the number. You can have 600 devils. And, and somebody have 60 that's trying to do the will of God. And you can get more done with the 60 than you can with the 600. Because when we walk in the spirit, there is liberty. When we walk in the spirit, there is direction. And so I invite you. To give all of yourself totally to God in 2021. And I promise you, based on the word of God, that if you do that, God says if you like yourself in him, first, he'll give you the desires of your heart. I don't know what you're seeking from God, but the answer is to put him first. 
Matthew 6 and 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these other things shall be added unto you. David could have died in judgment, but because of God's mercy, he gave him another opportunity. And that may be someone in the audience or someone that's viewing the telecast. Get it right. Don't let pride take you out. If life is not right with God, there is no shame. The only shame is not getting it right. And so, I want to remind you that it was Jesus that went to the cross and died for our sins. All the shame, all the guilt, I tell you that you can't stoop so low that the blood of Jesus can't pick you up and put you back on the street called street. He died for every sin. And so today, if that's you and your life is my life, and we want to thank those that are writing in and uh, responding uh, that said that they're needing God's help, there's a place for you in the kingdom of God. God's plan of salvation is simple. He simply tells us to repent of our sins, to be baptized in water in his name, and to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 2, you'll find my salvation. Now, once God delivers you from the stain of sin, then he tells you to live holy every day. Not just on Sunday, uh -oh. but every day, all day. And you'll begin to see the blessings of God in your life. If that's you, and you're in need of God's help, I invite you to come or call us at the number on the screen. Remember, we're greater. We want to do greater works because of God. Not because of ourselves. Because what we know, we know because of God. Who we are is because of God. And who we will be it's because of God. And so never get so big, and puffed up, feeling like you have arrived because just like God gave it, God can take it away. God bless you as our prayer. We hope and trust that you've been blessed by the word of God. Can you put your hands together and give God a praise and thanks for being such an awesome God.